Remember when we sold the 95? And I said, uh, I knew there was something good in Texas. <laughs> yeah, I was right. Our vice is Facebook Marketplace. And uh, we've been working on this deal for a while, actually. But would you ever think that we're doing a revival on a Duramax? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Duramax. But this is what we should be reviving. Yeah, yeah. So this is a mild out old truck that was used on a farm. And we saw it on Facebook Marketplace. Does it run? Hasn't ran in about five years, um, according to the owners. It's been sitting in this field. Um, and uh, we thought it was a scam. They thought we were a scam. So it's been it's been like six, seven, eight weeks uh, of communicating. Luckily, our friends Emily and Aaron are close by. They came and saw it. And they're like, you know what? It's a nice, clean truck. And it deserves to be driven back to Canada. Because that's what we do, right? It's kind of funny. 20 it's kind of funny how we both thought the opposite of each other. <laughs> <laughs> but we're actually super nice people <laughs> that like each other right off the hop. So yeah. So what we've got is a 2005 Duramax, and we don't know anything about it. Unfortunately, the gentleman that owned this passed away, and he'd be able to tell us what's wrong with it. Emily and Aaron looked at it. There was no coolant in the oil, but um, we're gonna see if we can get this thing running, and then hopefully it's not a head gasket. Hopefully it's just a fuel-related issue. Um, maybe we'll throw fast on it. We'll just diagnose it as it as it kind of sits. And then we'll figure it out from there. Because we got a couple days here. We could do head gaskets on a Duramax, right? It's only like an 18 hour job. Which is less which is than one, one day. day. Yeah, one day. <laughs> There's yeah, 24 that, hours in the day. <laughs> that leaves us about four, six hours for sleeping. Here we go. Your recollection of what happened was correct. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Not cool. Not cool, cool well, you got cool. a good memory. That's good. <laughs> so this episode will be Can, can You Duramax. Drive? Can you drive a Duramax 1,500 miles with a blown head gas? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so about every 10 minutes, we have to crank for like 20 seconds. Is it hot? <laughs> we found the cheat code. We've got an awesome episode coming up for you guys. We took the F-350 on its longest run ever, grabbing another project out of Texas. But it's cold and depressing out here in Canada. Everything's dead, covered in snow. How can you cheer it up? This beautiful calendar. Woo! <laughs> Not too many of these kicking around still, but get them while you can. 2024. These are a limited run. We're running out. They're selling fast, uh, but we want to get these into your hands. So if you're an annual member, you get these for free. Thank you for your support. If not, they're available for purchase on DeBossGarage.com. So we're very excited about these. Go out there, check it out. It's a limited run. Once they're gone, they're gone. The video already started and we're already in Texas, but this is before then. Um, the story on the truck is that the quote was an injection pump and a bill of $3,000. So we decided to park it and leave it at that. There's a few things that will keep it from running um, and those are more common than it to stop running. So lift pump uh, sometimes sucks air, they're prone for that and they uh, will suck air and it won't prime the pump. And then the lift pump that's on the front of the CP3, it's a little plate uh, it's not very thick that pulls fuel all the way from the back tank all the way to the front Now that's working overtime because this is a crew cab long box So that fuel is is about 40 miles away. So we bought this engine basically for the price of the CP3 um, They're not common to like grenade, but it has happened generally they get weak and you start losing power You can't get as much fuel so we are going to take the CP3 with us along with the entire fuel system and uh, the lift pump and we're going to take a fast just in case and install that. So we got Joe here who's taking off the wiring harness. Um, he is getting to learn all about the common rail injection system and I'm, I'm bugging him as he's working and he's doing yep. okay. So we're going to use all the tools that we need to work on this in my shop and throw it in that pail and then have all of that with us when we work on it over there. We were gonna take the whole engine, and then I decided that I don't want a big giant engine rolling around in the back, and the board doesn't like it when we show up with used engines that obviously are not going to a dyno because it doesn't look dyno ready. Are you good dogs? Yeah. You guys good dogs? All right, let's go. 
let's go. If the diesel isn't running, it's because it's not getting fuel. So um, we thought that this was diagnosed as a CP3, which is buried way down in here somewhere. Um, but hopefully we don't get to that point. There's a few issues with this truck that um, sometimes get overlooked. So this, um, this is a very good setup, this diesel, in a very complicated way. Um, there's a couple things they could have done better and, and they didn't learn from the, the, the Duramax. It should get hard. Is it getting hard? Keep pumping. If it's sucking air, it, you are feeling it? It's getting better? Not a, a little bit, but not uh It's not hard a lot. now, isn't it? Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I'm still. Oh, okay. Anyway, if it sucks air, the CP3 doesn't get fuel, and then it will not start. Generally, it won't start, but once you get it going by pumping that, it'll run and keep running. That's how I used to keep my tow truck going. I'd have to go there every morning. They're like 20 bucks on Amazon, man. <laughs> Pump it as hard as I can, <laughs> go around the front, start it, come back, keep pumping. pump it, go around. Once it gets going, I'm good for the day. Another issue with this thing is the lift pump is actually on the front of the CP3, or on the back of it. And it is meant to pull fuel all the way from that back tank all the way up into here. If that lift pump goes, again, it will not run. So that is a no runner. And there's a, there's a fuel rail sensor that sees if it, it gets 6,000 PSI to fire in the injectors, but there's no sensor to tell you that the lift pump isn't working. Our other issue is that rare, but you had to happen. Yes. And I had to happen to one of my customers is somewhere in the fuel system is a little rubber, like O-ring-ish bung. Like a rubber smarty. Yes. And those get stuck in the line and just starve it from fuel. And that lift pump does not have enough uh, juice to pull it, uh, pull the fuel through that bung or you'll drive and then it'll just bog down and die on you. And there's been a lot of misdiagnosings on injectors and injection pumps or CP3s where it could have just been a fuel issue between here and the tank. So um, we had to diagnose all this in Canada. So we, we uh, brought some parts with us, um, but basically we're gonna throw some batteries in it, check the mileage, see if it cranks over, and then Maybe we'll just hook, hook the fast from the F-350 in it and make sure we got good fuel coming out of this fuel line here and then crank it over and see if it'll run. That would be amazing. It would, yeah. <laughs> it would leave a lot more time for fun activities. <laughs> this is fun, activities. This is, <laughs> this is getting junk running in a field. We've got horses, we've got donkeys, we've got, we've got horse dung everywhere there's a rusted el camino over there there's a mustang in the shop yeah mustang in the shop it's been sitting for 20 years <laughs> anyway i'm gonna grab the f-350 and then we'll uh start by pulling up these batteries here we go all right here. sorry about that aaron it's a little bit embarrassing usually my trucks are spotless <laughs> um but like like what most vehicles uh become when you set them out in the field they become a uh a really cool dumpster so I think that's what this was kind of used for for the last two or three years. Uh, at least that's what we're told. Any trash that was laying around here, they loaded up with uh, trash in the back. Um, looks like it's fairly cleaned up now, but I mean, we're talking, I don't know, it looks like uh, coffee, tobacco, whatever it did to this penny, I have no idea. But uh, that's pretty corroded. Um, but yeah, other like everything seems pretty decent. Usually these are busted. Seats are in fairly good shape, couple of tears. A uh, lot, really sandy on the floors. Uh, it was used as a work truck for sure, like without a doubt. Um, but looks like they must have loved it. Last oil change we see on here, 302,000 miles. Uh, that's a lot of miles. Uh, this thing is gonna be a beauty. I can't wait to see if it turns over. It just brings me back to when I got my uh, uh, big red my first tow truck remember buying that thing and that, it served me well for probably seven eight years um, Yeah, can't wait to get this thing started. Hey, this will come in handy leg cramps. It's for leg cramps Yeah, I wonder if they're still good. I might give them a go tonight if I get a leg cramp in the middle of the night a couple of cool hats Yeah Those are vintage formula 707 Oh, this guy's not gonna open. There we go. There you go. Oh, it's this. Oh, thanks, title chip. 
Registration renewal receipt. Got the RPO sticker in there. First things first, batteries. Batteries. We got a new set. Look, when you open it up, it doesn't fall a thousand pieces. Wow. So, so these batteries are from 2015. Hasn't been used for a while. Um, didn't even try to mess with the batteries. Just throw a couple new ones in. Cross your fingers. I noticed the dipstick is missing for the uh, transmission. I noticed that in a picture from uh, Emily and Aaron when they sent the pictures to us. Hopefully that's not an issue. Transmission is kind of a big deal because even if we get it running and it doesn't move, then we're in trouble. Now, we did bring the F-350 in case we could tow it home. I don't want to tow it home, I want to drive it home. Because then we can buy two trailers and tow other stuff home, not the project. I got a little bit of mouse issue. You can see the thing coming off the back, but yeah. everything else looks complete. So, story, story is, one story was that I quit running. Another story is that he drove it here and parked it here. I don't know. 302 was the last oil change. Oh yeah. Okay. In 2017. In 2017. <laughs> 302, 550. Okay. That's too bad. I was hoping for like 120. <laughs> um, I'm going to cover that uh, tranny fluid. Yeah, that tranny dip. Yeah, okay. Shit down there. You think the AC still works? I, it was serviced. There is. I was looking over some of the stuff, and and the oh. AC got serviced in 2017. Was there, was there <laughs> anything like any official diagnosis? Um, no. No, not in the paperwork I saw. Okay. Yeah. So we gotta find this ground. That snapped off. Yeah, that's not. Good. That just so for the... eliminates the frequency on computers, like the FICM. Oh, okay. And it's, it's doesn't really. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, what's the mileage? Is it ding? 307 581. Hi, right, so it's even, it's due for an oil change, but it was regularly maintained. Sticker said 302. When does it work? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Back windows. Oh, wow. Nice. All right, well, we can air this out because it doesn't smell the greatest. Tailgate. Ah, and the tailgate bezel's missing. <laughs> Uh, I'll have to talk about this one then. <laughs> this isn't busted. Usually what, busted. usually what happens in Canada, these will be stuck on, the latches will be stuck, you give that a pull, crank, 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 and this busts off, and then this breaks. But yeah, this just must have popped off. <laughs> that is, that's a nice thick bed liner. And it got no diesel in it. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, baby. Yeah. Pump, 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 pump. So there's a bleeder here. Doesn't look like. Oh, that's bad diesel. Is it? Feels like diesel. It smells like gasoline. It smells like old gas. Doesn't it? Pump until it gets hard. No, I've tried me twice. Crank it. Crank it. <laughs> <laughs> Might need that. Four of us are going back to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't turn over twice. See if it'll move. <laughs> oh, 
this quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that takes a lot of uh, a lot of pressure off. Yeah. Well, yeah, as long that... as it's not a head gasket. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're not over the hill yet. I I, I think uh, once you said head gasket, uh, I'm like, yeah, it's not hard. Um, not up to tempo either, right? No, no, it's not. But it's not rock hard, so that's that's something. The cool one looks good. It's still pink. Oh, There's no oil in it. That isn't a hole there. It's a spider's nest. <laughs> Frick, freaking black widow hiding in there or something. There. <laughs> So we're just going to dilute the fuel a little bit. Um, nice enough to let us pull it up to the shop there and uh, wash it. From there, we're going to drive it to Emily and Aaron's and uh, put it on their hoist to go over the truck. Probably needs front brakes. Uh, we need to get tires figured out, check all of our fluids. We're going to install fast so that uh, we don't damage this pump anymore. That's pretty shitty fuel in there up a little bit of ATF in there and then start driving home unless we can find a gooseneck trailer I don't know possibly I mean it has a gooseneck ball it'd be a shame not to use it and tow meters <laughs> we're probably not gonna do it but <laughs> Andy's made some friends <laughs> they're not the best guard dogs <laughs> <laughs> I figured out their kryptonite and scrubbing their belly. <laughs> yeah, that goes hard pretty quick. <sighs> so, if fuel's the issue, uh, it's not that. Because that's, uh, there's no, don't hear any vacuum sucking sounds or anything like that. It's holding that prime pretty good, so. It seems that's pretty good, so we either have figured out the problems or we don't know what the problem is yet. That's kind of scary, but, uh, Feels good, but it's kind of scary. We'll see what happens. coolant level. I'm thinking we've got head gas issues. So that's that's a big deal. More of a big deal than the injection pump. But doesn't make it undrivable. No we can like I got another engine at home which we got. Although there was still coolant in there. I'm like I'm I'm definitely sure it's low but well, it's topping up the water so that goes away. Let's see how quickly it comes back. And then check the stiffness of the hose, upper rat hose. Yeah. So, what? we've got head gaskets. Head gaskets are gone. So that's yeah. the thing that sits between the top of the engine and yeah. the middle of the engine. So that's unfortunate. That's common for these. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Your engine is a giant compressor. That's that's all it's doing is is making compressing air and then you light it and it, it forces the piston down. That's what makes everything spin. So that is a system that's enclosed and then you have coolant to keep everything cold. What's happening is that air from that compression system is now leaking into the system that's supposed to keep it cold. And that is a problem. So it's supposed to be sealed. Yeah, so so now when so now it's got coolant that's going into the engine now and that's not supposed to be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> so So that pressure that pressure is getting forced 
into those lines. Yeah. Like into so coolant lines. Your your recollection of what happened was correct. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Not cool. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, you got cool. a good memory. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. So yeah, we got head gasket issues. That's why it was parked. <laughs> yeah. But we're gonna wash it. We're gonna take it back to the bank. See how bad it is. You shut it off, right? Okay. And then we'll go from there. We'll, we'll figure it out. Give give the truck a bath. Okay, so there's no, the oil isn't milky, it's black as black can be. So the biggest issue is when you have a head gasket go, you pressurize the cooling system. So the cooling system runs at 10, 15 PSI, but you've got combustion pressures, which are like 400 PSI. So the, the um, upper rad hose is rock hard. When you shut it off though, what happens is you can't just take your rad radiator cap off because everything's hot. It'll explode in your face, it'll give you burns and you have to go to the hospital. And your wife's all sad because your face is now destroyed. He looks like Tom Cruise from whatever that movie is. Where he looked all screwed up. <laughs> the one where he mangled his face with a hot coal. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, when you yeah. shut it off, now there's no combustion chain, uh, pressures. So now your cooling system is pressurized. So now it's pushing the coolant the opposite way into your engine. Now you got coolant in your engine. Now you got big problems. So um, I think uh, as long as we leave the cap off, we're going to try it anyway, not build up pressures. So then when we get to where we got to be, um, it just has a chance to cool off. It uh, might be able to drive it home. I really don't feel like doing head gaskets here. That's a big job, a really big job. But the problem is like to do head gaskets, but then you still have a mild out engine with new head gaskets. I would much rather pull the engine and redo the rings, bearings and, and that, then you got a brand new engine. So yeah, so whether we rebuild the one that's in the shop or pull this one out and have Scott look at this, um, cause then we got a brand new track, right? Like look how clean that comes out afterwards. We steal this for the Gator. And check that out on the other channel. We also bought a John Deere Gator two for one deal because it's got an eight foot box. Looked online, supposedly the Gator fits in the back of the box, of the bed. So no point in going home empty. <laughs> but I think we'll put it in the back of the F-350. Look how good that looks. Ugh. Take me back, take me back to the old dirt road Where mama and papa used to go Let's sing all them songs from a long time ago And pine for them old days of yore Well, let me run through the breeze like the leaves on let me fly like the leaves when they fall Well, let my mind go serene Like a cool water stream That runs from the mountain so tall Oh, take me back down the old dirt road <laughs> it's just like the door hinges aren't even worn. On like 300,000 miles, I bet it's worn to shit. It's like, nope, nope, it's fine. Yeah, replacing the bulbs. I did get the wrong bulb. It said a 9006, I grabbed 9004. So, I don't know who to blame on that one, me or... I forgot the spark plugs for this thing, so... All right, so we're even. 
They're both even. All right. So this lens assembly is all smashed, but if you can't fix it with zip ties, you're just not using enough zip ties. You just need to make it. Better than she was. Nice. Picasso. It's a workout. All right. Beautiful. Obviously had a little bit of front end damage here, but good enough for our purposes. We got lights. All right, so we got the truck. So it's sort of legal for the road. <laughs> <laughs> we got lights going, windshields coming in the morning. We're getting some tires, um, getting all that figured out, but this was, so this is Jenna and Chase. Hi. And these are who we were talking to on Facebook Marketplace. We didn't know who we were talking to. We thought you were schizophrenic for a while. <laughs> you're like, not. I'm not Chase, I'm Jenna, but it was your Facebook and whatever. We, we finally figured it out. Eight weeks, six weeks, something yep. like that. Talking back and forth, getting the title, whatever, but we're here. But this was your baby? Yes, yes, this was my truck. Okay. I know I was in high school at some point. I would say probably four or five years ago. <laughs> I, think so. I think I was a junior, maybe maybe a sophomore in high school. Sophomore driving around in the Duramax yeah. Dually. <laughs> well, I throw a race and I use it to pull the horses. Okay. But yeah, I definitely got a lot of slack at school about it. So. Oh yeah, right on. So you, you're, you've got emotional attachment to the truck? Yeah, so it was mine for a long time. And actually uh, on the tailgate, it used to say, Mama tried to raise a lady, but Daddy raised a princess. And the back of my trailer said the same thing, okay. so it matched. And then I got a new pickup, a 2009, exact same truck. Okay. And so I kind of upgraded, I guess. And then I gave this one to my dad. And he would always drive it around town and would get pulled over for whatever reason. And the cops would be like, well, you're not the princess. So <laughs> anyways, after doing that for a while, I think he finally scraped it off because he wasn't the princess. But yeah, yeah, yeah. this truck has been in our family for a while. Nice, nice. Well, we're going to take good care of it. Um, when we get back, I don't know, we might really hurt the engine because it's got a head gasket gone. <laughs> I would never do a head gasket without sending the heads out to get decked and get the valves all done and all that because it's old. It's got lots of mileage on it, but yeah. if we do it here, we're doing all the work to do the head gaskets yeah. and it's still an old engine. So if it doesn't make it, we'll tow it. But if when we get home, we'll treat it right. This is going to be a nice <laughs> truck. I, I wasn't crazy about the bumper at first, but as soon as I'm here, I'm like, I, I really like that bumper. That's, yeah, that's yeah. a nice bumper. Yeah, we've always liked it. And, and it's been tested. You know, we've <laughs> rear-ended at least a few people. <laughs> <laughs> that's good news. <laughs> I was going to say, if it's driving, it's driving home first. If you but, smoke a deer, then yeah, it's like... Yeah, do you it, see any damage? No, none. no. None. There, there's none. Yeah, so, <laughs> but, the other, but the other guys, yeah. you don't want to see them. <laughs> so, so the bumper definitely kept the truck in good shape, but the truck is like really mint everywhere. What the heck happened with the hood? Yeah, well, you see, that was one of my horses. <laughs> like to taste of car paint. <laughs> so just the big front teeth and yep. just, oh. Yep. Look at the Ford, it's got the same one. <laughs> same spot? <laughs> same, well, uh, right side. Oh, right. Well, Jenna, thank you very much. Thank you so Chase, much. Chase, thank sir. you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you guys letting us wrench it here a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. You guys are bringing us cheesecake and, <laughs> and laughing and yeah, life is good. So dogs, the ponies. <laughs> yeah. Horses. Horses, Horses, yeah. yeah. Alright, we're gonna drive her out, go back to Emily and Aaron's, go over the rest of the track, and then hopefully make it home. Alright. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Yeah, fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah. Alright, now the test is how hot does it get, and can we drive it all the way to the... Got a bunch of bulbs out. Can't see anything. It's not bad, They're like, they might even out a little bit, but... So, 
vibrations like crazy. Yeah. But those that's all tight. Well it's about the same RPM as the cat. We're doing about two thousand, doing uh, sixty. So it's slowly climbing, it's not getting hot yet. Steering wheel doesn't really pull. Steering is tight enough for a dually. Just gotta hang out around 210 and not get any hotter. So we get hot, we're just gonna drive it home. Yeah, eh? Well, possibility. Go we'll pop the hood, let's see how hot it is. Yeah. I, I, one thing I forgot was my infrared gun, just to see. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. For sure. But it doesn't feel like it's overheating. Like, like I can touch the head. It doesn't feel like it's getting hot at all. Why? Well, oh, I left this. Loose. Gotcha. That's that's my it's my three thousand dollar fix. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> it builds pressure in the cooling system. Yeah, you're not paying for the job. You're paying for the knowledge. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no heat in the cab, but but no no coolant in the oil either. So yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. a give and take. It's a give and take. <laughs> <laughs> But it might be a good idea to see if see if it can cycle through somewhat. Like if we top it up. Yeah. 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 Either with yeah. water or whatever. Yeah, so I don't know how low this is. That'd be a tomorrow thing. That's a tomorrow thing. Yeah. I don't want to do okay. No. We'll be here. We'll be here all week. <laughs> so so now we're at Flying Sparks Garage. Who <laughs> have been very nice to us to let us use their shop. But uh, they're on power tour west, so they took the Corvette out. So definitely go check out that series. They cleaned up that Corvette really nice. It's a good timing by us. Good timing by us, but um, we only got to see him for a short little minute this morning when we picked up some parts, but we're just gonna do some tires, some fluids, check the coolant. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> You're not looking. <laughs> but, anyway, and then uh, do belt. Uh, we got some lenses coming, so they're not hanging loose. And then uh, I think we just book. Well, to be honest, like the amount of people that drive the Duramaxes with a blown head gasket and don't know it, don't know it, or don't <laughs> repair it, like like it, that happens a lot. Well, the thing is, and again, head gasket putting compression in the coolant system depends on how tough your cooling system is because it'll hold pressure for a long time right but but the issue is when you shut it off it's pressurized and then it pushes the coolant into the engine you get a little bit on top of your pistons and then you crank it over you bend your rod and you, you screwed your engine right right so it sounds really good it sounds good it's got power um i don't think we bent a rod i don't think it's missing or anything there's no coolant coming out of the exhaust so this episode will be can, can you Duramax. drive? Can you drive a Duramax, fifteen hundred miles with a blown head gasket? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Things got amped up a bit. <laughs> the stakes are up. Yeah, so yeah. I think we're in good shape. I think we're in good shape. Yeah, we can go and watch. Good purchase, uh, either way. I I love the truck, man. Like oh. seeing it, and it's just like so clean. Just a little bit interior detail. It windshield's coming in the morning. We're uh, get some tires on it. We're gonna lift it just a little bit. Do a leveling kit on it. Put a fast on it. Put that uh, rail back on on the bed. This is a good family truck. It's a good work truck. Yeah. Like look, look what we just did. We were able to pull that truck out of the way. No problem. <laughs> I put it in a four wheel drive. Didn't even feel it. No. But yeah, what a handy truck. Yeah. Yeah. And quiet. So quiet compared yeah. to the cat. It's very quiet. Yeah. All right, so today's the next day, and uh, first thing we're doing is just 
I don't think it's worth an oil change because we're going to put a new engine in this. But um, see if there's any coolant at the bottom. So we know that the combustion is getting into the cooling system, right? And we need to make sure that there's no coolant going into the engine itself. That is going to result in a lockup and bent rods and damaged crank and whatever. But I don't think it's worth doing an oil change, but we let it sit all night. And so far it looks good. We've got just straight oil coming out. So the coolant would separate a little bit. Uh, we'd have milky oil or we would have straight coolant coming out, but that looks really good. I'm happy with that. I'm so happy with that that I am not going to do an oil change. It was done at 302, we're at 307, it's 5,000 miles. We could probably get another 1,500 before it's due and then we'll be home. So, um, good. I might swap a filter on just in case the filter cartridge is, sh is crap, but we're just going to leave the oil in there because um, what we're going to try and do is limp this thing home um, and I'll show you that plan. And I'm either, I'm either really smart, my genius is just too much, or I'm wasting my time and I'll look like a complete moron. So anyway, I'll show you. Toyo Tire Warehouse. Picking up some uh, fresh shoes for the for the uh, new Duramax. Door 40 with all the other transports. It's just like getting lobster straight off the boat. Tires right out of the warehouse. All right, so for this truck, we went with 285-75 R16 AT3 Toyos. Now stock, they came with 265s I believe on this truck were 235s you know me I like my big tires and I like a little bit extra meat they are a little bit wider but these are the biggest tires that you can do with virtually no rubbing if you crank the torsion bars on the front so perfect fit for our truck they're nice and quiet they're good in the rain and in the snow and these will definitely get us back home again exactly the way we want here we go Brakes look really good. Got lots of pad. Looks like they uh, took a mudding right before they parked it, but I um, was able to get grease in the outer and the inner tie rod on the drag link up top there. And then the upper and lower uh, ball joints, they all seem tight. We've got our inner and our outer tie rod here. I'll check. Uh, we got to find a dipstick for it, but we got this filter, we'll replace that. I gotta check the um, transfer case oil just to make sure that's up. It doesn't look like it's leaking too much, but you can see the line of oil that comes out of there from spraying. So there's not much oil in there, so we gotta check that. I'll probably crank the torsion bars and adjust my camber just a little bit because we're going a little bit bigger tires just for the clearance. But that ranch hand bumper, which I am falling in love with more and more, is nicely tapered way more than the factory bumper so i think they allow for bigger tires on the front anyway so it'd be a shame to put stock tires back on again because that would be stupid we love seeing this a sticker the original sticker on a frame but the frame is still a little bit rusty and that's gm's problem of not painting the frames so we'll do a rust treatment on that but you can see where everything is painted our inner rockers are beautiful Look at that. They're all there. I'll um, probably take the running boards off. I'm not crazy about them. I've greased the U-joints and the U-joints are nicely tight. So there's no, no play there. Hanger bearing looks good. This U-joint is still original, which is just bonkers. I imagine the fuel cooler's right full of dirt. I'm probably not doing a whole lot, but we're not too concerned about that. Um, the box everything looks really really good i'm happy with all of it um i wish we would have washed a little better up here because we're gonna throw fast in there and the t is in there to uh do the return from the fast this u-joint 
uh, was not original, so grease that. And then we'll check the oil in the diff. And the back brakes do need pads. So all our flex lines are good. All our steel lines are good. We're safe that way. There's no cracks in the leaf springs that I can tell. So um, we are in very good shape. Crazy. They put a smaller. They went from four to three. No, five to three. And four, I don't know, it's smaller, that's weird. It does sound good though. And then everything looks really good back here. All of the wiring is nice. Um, this plug is for the fifth wheel, I imagine. They teed in there and then our plug isn't looking so good back here, but that's okay. But other than that, um, we're, uh, we got ourselves a really nice truck. We got the fiberglass. Um, bedside which I'm not crazy about they're super fragile but that's what comes with this truck and we got a spare tire it's brand new and flat awesome so we'll throw some wiper blades on it and just check those fluids and then we'll throw the fast on it monkey up our cooling system and the windshield's coming in about an hour, so he's probably going to want to drop it back down again. I can throw tires back on if he needs to get in the doors. But everything's good to go. We got a good buy here. So we're swapping out the fan belt. We got a new one. It doesn't look bad, but it's a good time to just give everything a little spin, make sure that nothing's uh, squeaking or binding or is going to seize and wreck your belt and cause all sorts of havoc on the way home. But uh, actually, you can tell the truck was maintained pretty good because that doesn't look bad at all. Now it's been sitting for five years. Almost don't even need to do it, but we're gonna do it. Air filter, however, not so good. They uh, really like their mud. She's, uh, she's pretty crusty. So we'll swap that out, let her breathe. So one of the problems with the LLYs it was a giant turbo with lots of air and then a little intake neck between the two valleys that just chokes everything right out. And then to top it off, you've got an EGR cooler, which fills that up with carbon, builds it up and just makes that hole smaller and smaller and smaller. But it runs good and it doesn't smoke. So I think we're okay, but uh, we'll upgrade all of that when the time is due. Let's take our used fan belts and throw them behind the seat because a seized idler will destroy a belt whether it's brand new or used you'll be happy you did it when you need it all right got the windshield going in what's your name sorry my name's andy pomps andy pomps nice and you've done this before yes sir <laughs> you run a little business yes, uh doing uh, windshield? right here in dallas fort worth area it's called andy's auto glass nice and you just come so, to the door and do a free mobile service nice awesome yeah, we got a little stone chip here, so we need to uh, we need to replace this one. Did you do it? <laughs> Forget about the shattered rest of the yeah. class, right? Awesome. Looking forward to it. radiator cap and I just took got rid of the o-ring and I made a little slit that goes to this chamber right here so that will now allow all the air to escape but we're gonna get some coolant with that as well and we need the coolant to go back in again so we're gonna go we're gonna town just grab a hose that goes from here I'm gonna sacrifice this washer bottle and we're just gonna put a, a thread of fitting into here and then put that hose going into here then this hose 
um, with this adapter, we're gonna take this and tee that all the way back into the up, upper side of the radiator, which is this fitting here. So we'll just grab a T fitting here and then we'll play it by ear as to how quick um, this washer bottle fills up. So then the washer bottle, we're just rather than going to the windows, we're just gonna spray that back into the upper um, radiator hose. But check this, check, check this pump out. <laughs> I should empty that reservoir pretty quick back into there. So all we need is like a countdown on our phone for however long we drive so that every 20 minutes or 30 minutes <laughs> we remember to pump it back in again because otherwise it's just gonna fill up the washer bottle and spray up the top. Um, the only thing is when I blow in this, um, I can blow back into the, into the tank here and I don't want that. So we're gonna see if we can find a check valve that can go in line so that when you push on it, Hopefully it, it's vented enough through here that the cooling system won't be under pressure and um, the pump can overcome whatever pressure is being built up inside, push the coolant back into the radiator, and then it won't come back again into the washer bottle through this. But more than likely, it'll be air coming in anyway because the top of the rod will be empty. Never been done before, so <laughs> it's the internet. Or I've never seen it done before. And some guy's gonna say, I did that, it was not a big deal. It's yeah. like, what? but you know, it's I, I I still didn't see it online anywhere. This is what I came up with laying awake at four in the morning in the hotel bed. So, Just too new. I can't seem to just get it. But end of the night, where things just don't want to work. Really. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Good news, they got full use of their rig pack. We went pretty beefy on the tires. So we don't think that the mud flaps are gonna fit, so we're just gonna skip a step and just take them off. Not skip a step, we're just gonna do it right now. We're gonna have to anyways. Okay, so these tires are hub centered, so you can see how they slide right on the hub and they're tight. So um, that's what keeps the wheel centered on the axle. Because we went with bigger tires, we have to put a spacer in between. So the spacer goes right over top and then tightens down, uh, torques to 140, and then um, the other tire still is hub centered on here and is just held tight up against the spacer. So I'm not a big fan of uh, spacers on, on wheels to bring the wheels out because you're putting more tension on, like the, you're putting a sagging point, you're tipping it, which is really bad for the bearing. This doesn't affect that at all because the inside tire is still flush up against the hub and the outside tire is still on the, um, centered on the hub itself so it doesn't hurt anything at all there's been lots of people towing 30,000 pounds with these spacers and never had an issue so um it is a good idea though to take your outside tire off retorque the inside after a couple hundred miles we'll try to find that somewhere i uh, will drive around locally for a bit we'll come back we'll torque tighten the inside and then we will uh retorque the outsides just on the road. Okay, so these are the torsion keys. 
So your front suspension on this right now is uh, IFS, so the independent front suspension. So this torque, this torsion bar goes all the way to the front, and it's just a giant bar, and the entire suspension flexes in this bar. It just turns, and that's what keeps this going. Now on here is a key, and um, if you push on the screw, tighten this, it rotates this, and it will push the lower control arm down. What happens though is your camber will change, but you'll get more height on the front. So because we put bigger tires on the front, we're gonna go for that height, and it's going for alignment tomorrow, and then these cams are adjustable on the upper A-arms, and that'll bring the A-arms in and straighten the, the tire back out again. So right, we'll lube these up, try to get these to the top, because my wife, keeps telling me, hon, I'm short. Please bring the trucks home as high as possible with the biggest tires you can fit. And I said, okay. I, I think that's what she said. We got our lights, so we're gonna not have zip ties on our lights. We got our tires, wheels and tires, air filter, which was extremely dirty, and a couple other small things. We can take the tape off the window because the glue is dry. And then we got all the fittings to make our plumbing work. So, lots of stuff. I got brake pads for the back already eight o'clock at night we got like four or five hours of work to do got an alignment in the morning because we're going to crank the torsion bars because somebody went out and got way too big of tires it was me i got way too big of tires so they look so good <laughs> anyway <laughs> they do look good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're a different size, nothing fits properly. They got swelled ends, but if you warm it up or stick it in boiling water and then try to pop it on, it usually goes easier. the jug so I do need to top this up okay so now I'll put too much in but that's okay we're gonna lose it anyway <laughs> <laughs> uh, ball joints and all that are good actually I didn't even think because they told me not to worry about it <laughs> oh, I thought they well, were. The, the lowers didn't move though. No, I didn't see them move. All right, so fast will actually solve a lot of your problems. Um, the issues with these LLYs, like we talked about in the beginning of the video, was a uh, bad fuel filter, which sucks air, and a uh, bad lift pump, which is on the front of the CP3. Now, Talking to the guys that I know, they haven't seen many CP3s fail. It's not like they grenade and put shavings throughout your whole system. It's that they slowly get weaker and you lose power and then you realize that something's wrong. You check your pressures and your balance rates and they're not right. But FAST will fix the 
bad lift pump and the bad fuel filter. So um, on top of that, uh, you might even get away with that little rubber grommet, wherever that came from, and then clogs the line, it might even still be able to make enough pressure to, to supply enough fuel that even if you had that, you wouldn't even know it, um, and it would still run properly. So I truly believe that there has been more misdiagnoses on CP3s than actual failed CP3 pumps. That being said, um, we, we, we got it fast hooked this up with one of these and said, hey, we got a truck that's not running in a field and it could be any of these issues, but we know that a fast will fix us. So they sent the 165 and everything needed to uh, plummet into the system. Now this fuel is old. We diluted it. The tank was pretty well empty. Um, so we did top it all off. It will remove the water as well. We had a demonstration, we saw it live. I poured water in the fuel, watched the fast separate it. So it's a good system to have. It's cheap insurance and it's much cheaper than a CP3 or paying a mechanic to diagnose or misdiagnose your engine. Okay, it's a super simple little system to install. This goes into your filler neck exactly like this. So the fuel tank's on the driver's side and then your T kind of points it uh, for the return to go back into the tank. It's got all your lines and your hose clamps that you need for that. All your fittings already come with tape or goop on them so you don't even need tape. Um, and the nice thing is we can just plumb it right into the factory fuel uh, system. So what we're doing is basically just um, taking your fuel line from the tank putting the fast in line and then just keeping the, everything factory under the hood for now and it won't hurt a thing at all. So um, put this together, hang it up and uh, we'll be going down the road in no time. We're going right up into here. So this is a T that somebody's already put in. This is not factory. And this goes into the bed. So they probably had an auxiliary fuel tank and then just pumped the fuel tank full into here. So since that fuel tank isn't there anymore, we can just remove this piece, uh, take the old clamps off, stick our T in there, and then we're golden. Okay, so there's your fuel tank. There's a cooler. And this is the line we need to uh, dis disassemble. So this end goes to your tank. So that's your feed in the back of the fast. This end goes to your engine. And that goes to that top shiny fitting on the fast. So this is your return. Behind here is a spring. So that determines your uh, fuel pressure. Uh, the top, so that goes back to your tank. This is your feed, your nice clean fuel going to your engine. And at the back of it is your inlet from your tank. So all we're taking is we're teeing into a fuel line that has a connection up on top of the tank here. And we're putting the inlet to the back, the piece that goes to the tank. And the line that goes to the front is going to now get put into there. And this will just go into our filler neck. And that's it. Run some uh, power to it and you've got a fast supplying plenty of clean water-free fuel okay so the fast fitting has this clip that grabs it and the steel line goes inside and that's that yellow o-ring is what seals it and basically this this clip here is what keeps it from sliding out um, on the factory setting because it's tight and you can't see it's a bunch of little fins that come out and keep that line from going back so you need a tool like this that slides, slides around the the hose and then pushes those fins in so you can pull the line out um, this, is, this is half inch and it's a little tricky sometimes but as long as there's no dirt in there if you have a blow gun blow out the dirt um, and it usually comes out without too much trouble so this piece does not come with a kit but we'll put the link on it for the amazon and we'll ship it right to your door by the time you get to that part in the install <laughs> here we go <laughs> Okay, so I like a nice clean look. So I start from the 
from the top here and work my way down. This is the part that goes into your fast. And then further down the line here, we just have a relay key on. So this has to go to ignition. And this is your fused that has to go to your battery. Now you can go to your battery. You can also go to this junction block right here. So where it says battery, so you can go to there if you want or right to your battery. Um, it's entirely up to you. Now that I got it plugged in here, I like to start at the back and then now I can start zip tying it all the way along the front so I got a nice neat run. All right, so it comes with this uh, fuse holder. So basically all you're doing is powering the relay and it has zero draw. So you can add it to any circuit that is on ignition, whether it's wipers or something that you don't use all the time um, is, is plenty good. But basically you unplug the fuse, you plug this in and you take the fuse that was out and you plug it back into here, plus the fuse that they give you. So one fuse would be for your relay, the other fuse would still be for whatever you're working. So if you take something that has a 10, 10 amp fuse, something like that, then you know there's not much draw on it, you're good to go. Hook up the battery, turn the key, and uh, we're driving. Guys, I just tucked the wire, I just fed it through here, up the bottom, and plugged it in here. If you take this cover off, there's a positive stud underneath too that feeds the fuse box, so you can put your positive on there at the same time for now because we are hitting the road. I just put it on this box and put the ground on the engine there. And uh, we're good to go. Put this cover back on again. But basically, it's nice making it look like nothing's actually been done, so. It's a lot quieter when it's pushing seven PSI and not uh, 80. Like, like a car fuel pump mix? Like the... A 350. Oh. There we go. You got to say to it. Yeah, I got lots of fuel here. Um. Yeah, should be able to go. Three. Two. One. Dead battery. <laughs> Sound better? <laughs> Man, now it's finally running how it should. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> Would there be any benefit of a check valve? I don't think so because we're not getting enough blow by. So like, I was expecting like a lot of air coming out of there, right? Uh, I'm just thinking the check valve might hold that, might hold the fluid in enough, like, like, depending on how much. So I, I ordered a check valve, but it's 20 minutes away in the wrong direction. I don't want to go that way. So the only thing that would happen is the pressure from here might be going back into, into the washer valve. It has to go through the pump. Right? And it's free. Like, it, that? like at, at one shot. Oh no no! It's no, while well, it's pressure. running, it's pressurized there and it's pressurized there. Right. As long as the washer pump is stronger to push the coolant this way than the pressure in the system, but there should right. be no pressure in the system because it's venting right here. Right. So. So. <laughs> <laughs> So the U-joints were tight when we first started, but we took, did take it for a drive last night just to see, make sure that we drove for a half hour or so to make sure our coolant thing sort of worked before we got too excited. And then driving it to the alignment shop this morning, we noticed a pretty bad vibration. So now the U-joint is sloppy. It's odd, but totally fixable. That still feels pretty good. This one's not bad. This one. Shut. That's what you were feeling, Amy. Yeah. Remember when I said that? It's just off just a bit. This will do it in the light. Okay. Put a little 
little grease in there ahead of time. Keeps the needles in place. done here at Flying Sparks Garage. Thank you, Emily and Aaron, for letting us use your shop again. Always, always a pleasure. I wish they were here. Yeah, I find like people <laughs> jet out of town right when we come to town. Have you noticed that? I, I kind of did. I don't know what that's about. Busy people. They're busy people. Yeah, okay. But anyway, <laughs> we are going to start heading back. It is Wednesday afternoon. You got it right. Yeah. Nice. Good I day. think we're like... I'm like three hours behind schedule, so you're like two hours ahead of schedule. Yeah. Yeah, I'm way ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but so. We're, we're going to see how far we get, and uh, if it makes it to the hotel tonight, that's like five hours away. That'd be a success. That'd be a success. Then we're good the rest of the way, otherwise we're looking for a trailer. <laughs> Sharp right onto Texas 198 North, North 3rd. Okay, so we got the... That steering joint knock on it that all GMs have. Just typical. Might have to talk to Borgeson. They've got a really nice fix for that. But um, there was the vibration this morning, so we'll see if that's gone. And he's just committing. Yeah. I think we're going right back to Canton. <laughs> I think that vibration's gone. I could feel it at 40 before already. So. Yeah. so that's good. So now it's just a matter of how warm does it get. We've got wipers and we've got heat, I think. Um, yeah, so we've got defrost on this, but no hot air coming out of the, out of the truck. So heated seats work. It's actually, the weather's not terrible. It's just above freezing at home. So if we book at home, we should be safe. We'll know in two hours whether it's good or not. Um, <laughs> we'll see how much water collects. Uh, yesterday, the half hour, it was about like this. So we'll uh, drive a couple hours and then head up a restaurant and or at least stop for fuel in a couple hours and then we'll play it by ear. But I, I think this might work. I'm, I'm pretty excited that it would work actually. <laughs> I'm still really happy with the buy, so especially because we got a spare Germax at home. So I mean the power is good. So about every 10 minutes we have to crank for like 20 seconds. Is it hot? No. Because I'm worried that my heat might burn out the pump. I don't think that plastic's meant to be 200 degrees. 
really that hot. Okay, it's not getting hot. I don't understand why it's not getting hot. Well, it's probably cooling down on the way through the pipe, too. Maybe. Like, it's it's basically mm -hmm. a big radiator. Right. Is it is it empty? Yeah, so, yeah. So I think so. Yeah. Okay. So that was... Good time to... Yeah, 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> every once in a while when you think about it. No, it's like every 10 minutes on your phone because it's going to start coming up here and then it's instantly on the windshield. My phone he's driving it. What's that? He's driving it. Oh, do you want to drive it? No. <laughs> <laughs> every 10 minutes on your phone. <laughs> what? You like, I don't, you I don't like your cat so much? I don't want to forget. <laughs> <laughs> down and uh, so far so good it is not close it has never been higher than 180 185 degrees so that's perfect i don't understand i understand the theory of everything that i was doing and what's going on i don't understand why it's not getting hot like the washer bottle is not getting hot either and i was worried that um, we might burn out that motor just because that coolant's going to be hot um, but um, 100 miles down is 100 miles down so if you're watching this and you see, do you know of a truck that's in your area um, and it's got a blown head gasket, this might be a good way to get it home so you don't have to tow it um, if it's within that area. But keep in mind that each head gasket goes in a different way. Uh, it depends how it went and whatever. There's no coolant in this oil and there was no smoke out the tailpipe. So there's no coolant going into the engine. If we have coolant going into the engine, we have hydro lock and then that's you destroyed your engine. But um, we only have 1,244 miles to go to the border, <laughs> so we're 1% we're there, 10% there, just done 6% there. Um, 19 hours of driving left, we did about two so far, so that's not bad. I'm, I'm really happy with this. I might have to pull the wipers off though, because the wipers are driving me nuts. I forgot about that. <laughs> we had the wipers off the whole time when we did the windshield and then I popped it and I did the test and whatever. And then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna throw the wipers back on again. Luckily we put new blades on there. So it's not like squeaky or anything, but everybody on the highway thinks I'm nuts. <laughs> I'm washing my window every three minutes. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll go, I've, that's about a quarter tank that I burned so far. We'll go to about half a tank and then we'll just pull over and, um, stretch your legs and take a good look, make sure that everything's okay. I, I doubt Andy's probably just cruising, he's not looking at his fuel gauge or his gauges at all. So I gotta remind him to do that. But uh, so far so good. Um, I'm, I'm really happy. The truck is driving awesome. Nice and smooth, nice and straight. Uh, not vibrating at all. The steering wheel has quite a bit of play. So the steering box is probably worn. Um, and that's to be expected, so we'll put that on the list. But uh, uh, still got to pull the engine, but I'm really happy with this truck. So it, it it's way more quiet. It's way quieter and way more sophisticated than the cat. The cat's just kind of brute. It sounds awesome inside, but this is very calm and quiet. And no problem doing 19 hours in here. And he's just got the radio cranked and cruising too. So life is good. Here we go. <laughs> Back we found the G code. Find the tick don't, don't do your head. <laughs> don't, don't bother. Don't waste your time with the head gasket. Why would you? Why would you? That's going to cost you money. Your truck's going to be down. You're going to be swearing. 
Just run a hose across. Come on. <laughs> you can't tow anything. You can't drive in summer, but. The cool level's up. I'm sure it's fine. No, I got, I'm low on oil. I don't have a funnel. Ah. I got to get a funnel through the side. Yeah. So different, different opinions on these coned uh, lug nuts. The acorn? Because the alignment shop said I need the ones with the washers, so they're a different thread. Whereas the guy that sold us the spacers said the, the conical ones are fine, that's how they do it. So two professionals giving us two different opinions. Anyway, the important thing is to retorque it. So Andy had that tire off because we were going to put the, counter, the flat washes back on again. Then I realized that the threads were different. So those lug nuts did not spin as much because they had probably 40 miles on them already. Whereas that side was never touched. And those I got all a quarter turn out of. So we'll keep an eye on it, 350 miles. I think we're probably good, but another 500 miles and we'll check them again. coming out of a heater hose and then uh, boiling back there. Oh. When I was pouring water in, yep. I think it was coming out here. This is soaked, so we're losing coolant. Not a big deal, we can just attach one hose to each other. have zero heat inside. Yeah. But our washer pump doesn't sound as good as it, as good as it once did either. It's starting to complain a little bit. So we made it 630 miles, but we started getting hot and this reservoir is empty, but I think it's because we were leaking it back there. Yeah. I think we're still okay, but the heater core must be leaking. So we just gotta move a hose over. I need another pair of pliers, wherever they are, and a jug of coolant. I don't know, I drove for 10 hours, no problem. I have one little nap and I wake up and we're overheating, we got no coolant. I don't know, it's completely unrelated, but I don't know. <laughs> It still doesn't get hot. I got hot because I had no coolant in it, but like already it's not, like you know what an overheating engine yeah. feels like. It's, it's just like yeah, that's all the coolant we got left out of water bottles. Um, run it, I'd say fill it up with everything that we got. Then next stop, grab the coolant. Yeah. It's like being at the track. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
just 12 hours away from home. And that was the worst of it so far. We've, we've driven 641 miles and we have 645 miles to go. So we're exactly like halfway with the truck. <laughs> we made it halfway. But as long as it stays cool, we're okay. So um, I think uh, we'll go top up the water bottles and grab a jug of coolant just from the gas station. I could go to the bathroom and then I think we're good to hit the highway again. You guys, we're on the road again. I think that was a fluke thing there. So um, we pulled over and I had, I put some more coolant in there because we were definitely low and uh, had Andy pump it with the washer. And then it started steaming in the back right away. And I thought, that's it. The head gasket's done, coming out as fast as it's going in. We're, we're euchred. Um, but then I noticed dripping on the heater core hoses. Now they look fine, but I think what's happened is um, we can't get heat in the cab and I don't understand why. So um, if the water pump catches an air pocket, it can't circulate the coolant. Generally it gets hot uh, but you, and, and that's a telltale sign. You get no heat in the cab. But I think I'd be willing to bet that they put some of the head gasket stop leak in there and gummed up the whole heater core and with the coolant somehow sometimes hitting it it caused that fitting the leak and we just kind of happened to um, lose all the coolant or, or enough coolant like it went up to 210 which is not a big deal um, and, and I told Andy like are you not pumping he's like I'm pumping because I fell asleep for a bit and uh, so I think what happened is right at that point it broke and it's probably been dripping there a little bit and that could be why we don't have any heat in the cab it's still above zero. Um, it's a beautiful day, actually. Right now it's 60 degrees outside. Um, at home, it's about 50, high 40s. So we're okay, we don't need heat. The heated seats still work, and it's not getting hot now. The only thing is, our washer bottle pump is not sounding as good as it did when we first started. So um, the coolant's a little bit thicker. We put mostly water in this time. That's the first time we've had to fill up. So um, keep that in mind if you're doing this yourself. The washer bottle, if it has 300,000 miles on it, might only have a service life of about 650 more miles when it's pumping every five minutes. So I think we're gonna make it. We're gonna keep cruising and see what happens. I put a touch too much coolant in, so now I can't see when the bottle's empty because it can't physically pump it back in again. But I don't think I don't think we're losing that much. Maybe we're, I, I think, maybe we were losing it back there. I think we might have been. But I don't know, because we've only ever filled it up once. Uh, I can't suck any more out of this. <laughs> but the light's not coming on, it's telling me I'm low. Oh, no problems. Don't fix what's not broken. Seven hours to go, wait. I took a little bit out of the bottle here too, but it's not burning it. Oil's not going down, it's purring like a kitten. I don't know, life is good. Okay. Just need a little coal. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Choke it, you gotta choke it. You gotta choke it. Go. We're in Ohio. We're actually a day early for our paperwork, so we have to park the truck and the gator at uh, Andy's friend's house, and we can't grab it till Monday. But the trip's been really, really good. We have drove for 12 hours yesterday, so 12 physical hours of driving, and that's not including eating and filling. In a Duramax with blown head gaskets. With blown head gaskets. <laughs> yeah, this is the first time it's ever been done. <laughs> For sure, Although, with that much confidence. <laughs> with that much confidence. I, yeah. I think it's the internet, so it has been done before, but I don't know. 
Anyway. Maybe it's new. Anyway. Amazon. Yes, we're going to sell our uh, Duramax uh, head gasket repair kits on Amazon. It consists of two hoses, a couple T fittings, and a radiator cap that you can just kind of slid into, a knife, and a couple hose clamps. So you have everything you need in a pinch to get you 1,300 miles from where you are that day. We're going to hit the road. I'm almost defrosted. I can see a little bit. I think it's going to warm up yet and be a decent day. Um, and then I'm going to enjoy my heated seats and a blanket. And you guys enjoy your heat coming out of your vent. Must be nice to have heated seats. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad, but my feet are frozen. It's going to warm up my shoes a little bit. <laughs> I think we got lucky, though, because it's, it's uh, December 10th. And it's about 45 degrees out yet. No, no salt on the roads yet. Nothing. So overall, the the trip couldn't complain about it at all. I got a blanket over my legs, so my legs are warm and my back is warm. My hands, I just keep rotating. I should get some gloves, but uh, and then uh, just my feet get cold. So, but we are like two and a half hours from the border, and we don't need fuel. We just needed to stop. Uh, go to the bathroom. We're gonna hit the road again. You ready? Rock and roll. All right. So we can't cross with either one of these today. And the reason I put it in the back of the F-350 was because I didn't want to put any extra load on the Duramax. But honestly, it would have been fine. Yeah. But we let all the air out of the tires. So luckily, we got onboard air on the F-350. And I was a dummy. I didn't keep the valve cores. Ooh. But a caption do enough to get a home anyway so and uh rob from peter to pay paul if you want <laughs> yeah <laughs> take the valve core out of that yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't have a valve or valve core remover i didn't plan that far ahead yeah i had everything else hmm. Just kiss. Okay, if we like you got like a half. Okay, ready? One, three, two, three. Oh. How many miles did we come back on? So that's 1245 on the on the ticker, but the tires are bigger too. So I think it was 1350. Okay, so that's how long you can make it. 1350 miles on the on your kit on the DeBoss Garage Duramax head gasket repair kit. That's pretty good. It's not bad. Like most people aren't going to do that all in one shot either. So if you <laughs> like if you're commuting to work, yeah, that's months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got a couple of months. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, to source a new vehicle or a decent mechanic or another your, engine. Yeah, or, another engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not bad, but it, I, that's odd that we it did not start doing that until it pulled in the driveway. It started missing a little bit. And now yeah. it's smoking. So we'll uh, we'll float at home from here. We're we're just across the border. We're we'll we'll float at home. So there's no issues uh, because it still runs over. It turns over. And it's not knocking. So. But man, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, we did it. <laughs> I can't believe it, honestly. No, no. <laughs> That's insane. It is, like, like. <laughs> I'm like, we're dickered. I don't want to tow this thing home. It's from, heavy. From Texas to Buffalo. <laughs> 
Texas to Buffalo with blown head gaskets. And basically no issues. And and one, we ran out of coolant once because there was a leak. Yeah. That was unrelated to the head gasket issue. Yeah. But yeah. likely the cause of the head gasket <laughs> issue. Yep. So I think what we figured out is that there was a head gasket issue. They probably used some kind of head gasket, like stop leak or something like that. The stop leak got into the, fixed the head gasket problem, likely, kept the coolant out of going into the engine. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that stuff gummed up the heater core. The heater core built up pressure, had a split somewhere at the heater core. We didn't notice it until halfway down the trip, I think. Yeah. And or or the heater core split, he lost his coolant, overheated it, wrecked his head gasket, yes. didn't know that he split the coolant because the coolant bubbles out over, tops up the coolant with the stop leak, fixed the leak in the split hose temporarily, ah. plug, the, plug the heater core, we come along, do our bypass, it lets it breathe, 600 miles in, that original split happens again, we lose all our coolant, essentially duplicating the entire original problem again. We yeah. just bypassed the heater core and then made it home the rest of the way. And now head gaskets are gone again. Yep. So perfect. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Let's go home. Let's go home. All right, <laughs> we got our paperwork. Unfortunately, not for the gator, so we have to leave the gator here. But uh, we got the paperwork for the truck, so we're gonna take that across anyway. Um, the way it was smoking, there's a chance that it's hydrolocked, or we will hydrolock it. Um, I'm curious to see how it would start. Batteries aren't dead, so let's see what a cold start does to a Texan truck that's never seen cold or snow. Yeah, or snow. <laughs> Let go of the brakes. It's like a little power wheels unit. but the truck does it no problem. It's a nice ride, the airbag's in the back. It's as smooth, as straight as can be. I'm really happy with how the cat's pulling. So um, we're almost at the border. We gotta get all the paperwork ready, get our passports ready, and then uh, almost there. We'll see what happens. We oh, should have the truck home this afternoon. So what a nice truck, what a good drive. head gasket issue, so <laughs> <laughs> it's like, now we gotta, now we gotta bring it 2,000 kilometers home. Yeah, you fixed the issue, right? <laughs> yeah, we fixed it. We don't even need you. I just wanted to show you how I'm putting them out of work. Look at that bumper. 
Isn't that awesome? Holy. It just screams Texas. And at first I'm like, I don't I don't think I like it. That's heavy duty. You can bypass it through. Yeah. And then slowly the coolant spills out. I actually then... texted and I was like, I went right to Aaron. And I was like, man, you gotta this is actually ingenious. <laughs> we'll just drive around like this forever. You should just keep a bottle a bottle of stop leak in the back. I just, I think they already put it in there. Is that what I most Canadians the... do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, all the bolts are all there. There's no oxidation on the aluminum. Yeah. What year is this? So, 05. Oh, everything's so much cleaner down there. Eh? I know. That's not California clean. That's no. That's Texas clean. We had a guy come in and dropped off uh, two C12s, and he came from Long Island, New York. Yeah. And just rust. Yeah, he, he just, just happened to come that one day. <laughs> that was uh, we had that little bit of a snowstorm. Yeah. And he's like, he got here. He's so angry. He's like, look at my truck. <laughs> And like the frame was just black, brand new. I'm like, I'm like, did you get this undercoat? He's like, no, that's brand new. And it was like a 2012 or whatever. He's like, I hate coming here. <laughs> I just sounds pretty quiet. It's not bad, eh? Yeah. So. Look at that mud. I know, eh? Don't you have to claim that at the warning? <laughs> you can't, you can't weird get trouble for that. Yeah, weird parasites come over from that. Way to go. All right, the Sierra is back, and you're asking yourself, how far can I drive with blown head gaskets? And the answer is, just, I know half of you skipped the video to this point to get that answer, and I'm telling you, you're missing a whole bunch of entertainment. Just kick back, relax, watch the whole video. The truck is on a trailer, so that means something, or does it? But anyway, um, it was an epic, epic road trip, but in all honesty, this trip was more about the F-350 than it was about the Sierra. Um, we wanted one last little road trip. We had some time. We had a week free. Um, and it was nice to catch that extra last little bit of nice weather and a second fall with some leaves on the trees. Make some new friends, make some new memories. But it was just to see what the F-350 could do. But we'll get into that more. This was a nice road trip where it was kind of stress-free on the truck. And the backup was always uh, towing the Sierra home because it's got its issues, right? So um, we're not exactly sure what we're going to do with this truck. I have um, another LLY in the shop and that one just had head gaskets done. So we could just throw that in there and have a running truck. But I think what we'll do is tear that down um, and show how to build a kind of a nice, reliable LLY with maybe a little bit more horsepower, maybe get the transmission done. But we're not we're not attached to this truck. Um, there is, it does come with an insane amount of emotional attachment, but that is from Jenna. Um, the truck sat for a long time because of, because of her father passing away. So we want to treat this truck right. We're going to build it nice and then go from there. If we use it, we use it. If we sell it, we sell it. We don't know. We don't know the exact plans, but it is a beautiful truck. It is a nice platform to start with. This is still my favorite body style. When these came out, I'm like, I love that truck. And that hasn't happened since. Dodge, Ford, or Chevy. I, I, I think the trucks are ugly um, and they're a lot more comfortable and a lot more gadgets and gadgets, but I, I love that style of truck. So thanks for watching guys, appreciate it. Um, we love these road trips. We love meeting you guys along the way and making memories and, and uh, building our friendship stronger and stuff like that. So, and I highly recommend you guys do that as well. Lots of trucks down south, lots of cars down south and the nice free dry air where that is a nice platform to work with, whether it's 20, 30, 40, 50 years, old there's still lots of good iron out there don't buy in the salt belt <laughs> because uh, if you haven't seen our 06 build that's what it ends up uh, being out here so um, thanks for watching remember if you're not filthy you're not rich um, get out there and work on it make some memories and have some fun here we go it's not getting a cat it's not getting a caterpillar <laughs>